Hello everybody, and welcome back to the funny old game video catch-up thing. Um, <laughs> today's date is the 29th of March 2013, and we're catching up on all the action from the last three weeks, and we're going to focus on the international football that took place over the last week or so, because uh, World Cup qualifying was the matter of regard, and where better to start than two heavyweights at the game? Scotland versus Wales in Group A. Wales winning 2-1 despite the Scots leading at half-time. This was reportedly an awful showing from Scotland in Gordon Strachan's first competitive game in charge. And of course, uh, things didn't get much better for the Scots later in the week because on Tuesday they went down 2-0 to Serbia. They have yet to win any of their qualifying games and it doesn't look like they're going to either. It really hasn't been good stuff. How the Gordon Strachan being... Very resolute and saying, you know, look, we've got a lot of stuff to rebuild, we're going to focus on that. And Chris Coleman's joined him because despite winning that match, Wales went on to lose 2-1 to Croatia, pretty much putting their hopes of qualifying for the 2014 World Cup in Brazil out of reach as well. So, uh, both of these British nations now saying, uh, oh, we'll be focusing on building for the future. However, there is at least some hope for Wales with the uh, great performances continuing uh, from Gareth Bale, but also Jonathan Williams, the young Crystal Palace midfielder, coming in and doing a pretty sterling job in that game against Scotland. Uh, so disappointing for them. Elsewhere in this group, uh, Belgium were 1-0 winners over Macedonia in the other Tuesday game, and skipping back down to the Friday games, uh, Macedonia lost 2-0 to Belgium, and Croatia beat Serbia 2-0 uh, in uh, what was certainly a slightly uh, heated exchange. Uh, other scorelines that stand out, uh, two 6-0 wins on the Friday uh, in Group B, Bulgaria beat Malta with by uh, six of the best, and Austria did the same to the Faroe Islands. This seemed to be something of a uh, a theme, really, with these small nations that nobody wants to be a part of. Ultimately, though, that wasn't the worst pantsing that took place. That took place in Group H, where San Marino lost 8-0 to England. To England! They're not even that good. So, a lot of people are now arguing whether or not these smaller teams should take part in pre-qualifying. Now, myself personally, I'm not the biggest fan of international football. At the very least, um, you know, call me a product of the Premiership generation or whatever you want to say, but I do think that you get a better quality of football, by and large, through club competitions. Not always the case. The Spanish national team staring me right in the face saying, you know, oi, what are we, chopped liver? No, you're Barcelona without Messi, basically. But that's beside the point. This pre-qualifying tournament idea is one that I actually sort of agree with, if it can be done properly. Uh, because, quite frankly, I think there are too many international fixtures that take place uh, in qualifying for these tournaments. Yes, everyone has to have a chance, but there is potentially a way to do it with the seedings where I think it could be done. Uh, not going to get into that now, because quite frankly I'd be arguing with myself and people might think uh, that I have questionable sanity. So we'll wait till we have one of the other regular pundits on to debate that point. However, regardless, this was a good warm-up for England, an 8-0 victory over San Marino as they prepared to take on group leaders Montenegro, knowing a win would put them a point clear at the top. However, England could only draw one all with the Montenegrins. Uh, it was a result that left them second, however, they weren't overtaken by Poland. Despite Poland winning 5-0 against the San Marino, <laughs> That was no good, Poland, sorry. Uh, this was because earlier in the week on the Friday match, we saw Poland lose 3-1 to the Ukraine. Uh, so England remain in second spot, but and still two points behind Montenegro, with four games to go, still three of them taking place at Wembley as well. So England have every chance of still winning the group. However, they'll be disappointed to have not beaten Montenegro, particularly after they took a very early lead through uh, Wayne Rooney, who uh, managed to stay on the pitch for the whole game. So, good stuff from him. Elsewhere on the Friday, uh, we saw Germany beat Kazakhstan 3-0. Again, another of these small teams, according to uh, members of the German national team, who shouldn't even be taking part. So, there you go. The other big story, though, aside from Portugal and Israel drawing 3-3, Portugal themselves struggling to qualify, was Spain, the world champions, in trouble 
as they drew one all with Finland, while France beat Georgia 3-1 on the Friday. Lots of people going, what? You mean there's a chance the defending champions might not qualify, or at the very least finish second and then possibly face a, you know, a difficult task in making it to the World Cup? Is that really going to happen? Well, for a few days, everyone got a bit excited because Spain failed to beat Finland. Uh, poor finishing, the poor finishers being on the Spanish team, funnily enough. Uh, they were then facing a game against the French national team on the Tuesday, which could potentially scupper their chances of qualifying to defend the tournament that they won previously. This is the first World Cup where the defending champions don't get an automatic spot. So there you go. They went over to Paris, though, and they got a 1-0 win, courtesy of a goal from Pedro, which means that Spain go back to the top of Group I by a single point. So, internationally, it looks like things are back on track, everything's in order. Portugal even managed to get another win, 2-0, over Azerbaijan. Disappointment for Northern Ireland, though, after they only managed to draw one all in Friday's match against the Azerbaijanis, they lost 2-0 to Israel at home. So bad stuff. At least they're not as bad as the Republic of Ireland, who couldn't even play against Russia. The game postponed due to the fact that the pitch was completely snowed in. The Russians probably turned up and went, so? Snow? Not a problem. Uh, however, it, uh, yeah, it didn't go ahead. Uh, Russia is not involved in any of their group matches. The Republic of Ireland did manage to get a game going against Austria on the Tuesday, though, where they drew 2-2 with the Austrians. Disappointing result for Trapadoni's men. Germany extending their lead slightly further with a 4-1 win over Kazakhstan. So, uh, as things stand, you've got all the regulars looking like they're going to qualify. Italy doing well. They got a 2-0 win over Malta. However, they'll have to watch out for the Czech Republic. They got a 3-0 win over Armenia in that group. And that is it for our look at European qualifying for the World Cup. Join us after this short interlude when we'll look back on the Champions League football that took place over the last couple of weeks and, of course, previewing the quarterfinals. So everybody, please, stay tuned.